There you go. Now I'm gonna do a live painting. You saw the thumbnail, hopefully. I've got a full screen there. I have, oh no, what are you doing? No, not full screen, escape. I have a iPad, and on that iPad I have a app which allows me to do digital art. And um, I'm now using that to design my painting. So I've did, this is just one I did last night. I was up for a while last night because my head was empty, not knowing what to paint. And the worst thing you can do is come out here and try and paint something and you don't know what you're going to paint, all right? So I know what I'm gonna paint now. I'm gonna paint, so I've got it up on the other monitor here. I'll bring you over and show that in a minute. Um, it's gonna be like an ocean scene, but it's, it's gonna be a big cloud laying down on the horizon with the sunlit behind it. Okay, so there's a few things some people can learn out of this tutorial. I've got my horizon line a tid bit under halfway. Okay, um, as you can see, I'm going to have, get me bin out the way. I'll just show you on the display picture here. Let's hope it's gonna be, there we go. The cloud's not the best in digital art. I'm gonna do a better job than that, I hope. But I'm gonna have the rays coming from behind it. Uh, you might not be able to see it. I've got a subtle moon crest there. Uh, some land mass over here with a, a shoreline. And the shoreline's coming around here. So if it was a full view, that would come around as a cape type like that or a head. So I'm gonna use my two inch brush, cheap synthetic brush, cheap as chips from the hardware store. Very skinny little bugger. Look at that. This is good for applying my paint to the canvas. Now I'm gonna do a blue sky. So I'm gonna prep it with my flowing white student craft paint. See on the bottle there, it even says fine art student acrylic, okay. All right, and I want some retarder, which is a medium. This will slow down any acrylic paints, the drying time, and it allows me to blend the skies the way I do my skies. Okay, so we are going to pretty much mix that together. Now, I just do visual. See how much I mix together? That was just a visual thing. I don't go and measure it. You can read the bottle until the cows come home and find out what you gotta do, but art is a matter of experimenting. Everybody paints different. Anyway, I've loaded that brush up. So remember that, um, art, you can experiment. Now this canvas, good canvas cloth, and I just wanna get this retarded white craft paint onto my canvas. Now there's not gonna to be too much blending in this sky. But this helps the blue go on beautiful. And white is always a great background for colors to make them pop. Get some phthalo blue. I'm using Atelier paint. Someone was asking me what brands do I use. I love this one. I love it. Great quality acrylic paint. I forgot to grab a roll of, um, uh, what do you call it, paper out of my cupboard. I'll get one later. I'm just wiping that brush. I'll put a little bit of retarder with this blue as well. Not too much. There's plenty in that white, but just enough to get this to mix as well. Because this is going to be the surface the clouds will be blending on. All right, I'm going to get up the top there and get the paint pushed into that white. I'm letting it wear off the brush all the way. And now I'm gonna start bringing it down to the horizon because your horizon needs to be in a real sky, lighter than the top. Okay, now I'm gonna crisscross the ends there to get it all filled in. And don't worry, this is acrylic, but because I've retarded it with the flowing student craft paint, it's gonna stay wet for a while you now. I'll get that going again. All the way down to the bottom. There we go. So I'm, this is the first time I'm going live using one of my full size canvases. Normally I do them half size, because nine times out of 10 when you go live, things happen, mistakes happen. I'm picking up some more of that craft paint 
just so as I can lighten this sky a bit more because I feel it's a bit too dark. So I'm going to just grab some more. I'm just picking up the tube down here. Put some more on my palette there. I'm not even worrying about putting retarder in it because it's very wet up there and I want this a lot more paler. See, I've put too much blue. Here we go. That's it. Because remember, your acrylics dry darker. I think we all know that by now, but there's still people that pop on board and they're new to it and they need to be told. The next bit is the clouds. Pretty easy. So I use craft paint there and my titanium, I mean my phthalo blue. Now my clouds is titanium white. And I want a filbert brush for these clouds because as you saw in the picture, and as you saw how I showed you before, oh, I need more white, golly gee, and I need some grey. Uh, these clouds are going to be pillowy, fluffy. You know those round, fluffy, pillowy, bubbly types of clouds? They're going to be like that cumulus looking. Okay, so what do I use first? Um, I want, I'm going to try the grey first. The dark grey. Now we're going live, Ian, so don't make a mistake. Me horizon line's about... Get over there. Me horizon line's about here. Bit under halfway. So, I want it there, there and down. Yeah, alright, so I want to dab these on. Now, what, in my mind, what I'm doing, you know, like, you got your clouds like this. Well, in my mind, I'm creating those shapes, but with these dabs. So I'm coming down here, something up there, and I want to come down here and off to the side there. So that's what I'm creating within my mind. It's up and down, pillowy. And on the edges, they're going to participate into nothing. All right, there's my cloud, so I'm going to get that on there. I don't want to go too low to the horizon line because I want this to fade into the blue. I might have brought this down a little bit too low. I'm going to sneeze. Golly, Sergeant Carter. Oh. Oh, the fun of going live, eh? <laughs> got to sneeze. All right, I've done that. Now my blending brush, I've got a diff couple of different sizes. I want to blend that into the, um, what's you call it? That colour now. So I'm stamping it on. And I want to blend that down into the blue there. And it's going to fade away. But I'm keeping the top colour pretty much... There. And why is it such a grey cloud, are you asking, for those people who might not know? Well, the sun is behind it, so when the sun's behind a cloud, the, the side we're on is, if anything, darker. Now, this is all coming cloudy, and I'm just blending that. And I want it to come down, because my atmosphere will be whatever flavour I make it. There we go. And when I blend like this... I like to have a paper towel or a rag or a cloth, anything, because I don't know if you could see, but the constant build up on that brush and look at it come off on just like that paper towel, for instance. Now I want to clean this brush. So I'm going to rub him in my wipe it, clean it. How long have I been going for? Oh, wow, 20 minutes. I've got to get going. Now I'm going to pick up the lighter grey. I'll show you. Come down here. Get the lighter grey. And I want to create the fluffy pillows within that cloud now with this colour. All right. Jeez, I put a bit too much white on there. I'm not going to use all that white. And so there's one. This is going to create all the, the puffy billowingness within that cloud. Okay, put 
that on there. I'll see if this brush is still clean enough to blend all that. Yeah, not too bad. Let me have a look in the monitor, see what that looks like. Not too bad. I need a bit more up there. Because we're going to put a white um, halo on the edge of this cloud. I've never done a cloud like this before, so I'm hoping this will work out. I've usually done it my own way. I'll pull that up there. Beautiful, good. Now I'm going to get going here, I'm talking too much. I'll um, get that white, the titanium white. Oh, excuse me. Okay, what have we got there? Now, what I'll do, I'll put this in the cloud first and then I'll put the halo there. So we've got white, scrumbling within the greys. I'm just... Scrumbled within the greys. And I want to blend that. Because I don't want it too dark though. I don't want the, the middle of the painting dark. Has I just want something a bit different. Yeah, that's not too bad. And by the way, we're going to have some other clouds in the, the sky. That's good enough. Good enough. Good enough. That's good enough. Now, before I get too carried away, I need to put the other clouds in. There's going to be some other stuff here. That cloud's not finished yet, so don't look at it and go, wow, what a weird looking cloud. I'm just going to make that a bit more finer. Here we go. So I'm grabbing a fan brush, picking up some of that titanium white on there. And I wanted some sort of, um, you know, just fluffy clouds in the sky, just wiping that brush some more, and just, I don't know if it's a real word or what, but participate that into the blue, you know how you get those cotton wool fluffy clouds in the sky, just gap fillers whispering around, floating around like little angels, that's all these are, now I've got to wash that brush because it's so dirty, that fan brush, and start all over again so I'll get another white cloud on there, so I want something maybe... Gee, I didn't put much in my um, reference picture, did I? I want something about there, and maybe something there, just like that. Little angel, we'll call them angel clouds. Yeah, that's a good name for them. So I'll wipe that blending brush. Do the same here. Create turmoil. Twist your brush on and off so it's doing all sorts of wonderful artistic things on your canvas. Look at that. We've got the white paint there. I'm going to pick up some of that on the little filbert and I just want to see let me zoom in a bit how we go with this halo on our cloud 90 people watching eh? so now I don't want to go and be a silly bugger and just put one line around the whole edge I want to try and think what's in front and what's behind everything. That's, if you've done a cloud that looks a bit stupid and snotty, don't worry about it, because you can look at those paintings and learn from them. We've all done those ones, and we learn from them. So this is the halo. So what I'm trying to do is keep the edge pretty tight. I can wipe it up there willy-nilly. I'll just show you on a little bit here. And scrumble that lightly. Oh, it's drying very quick, so I'm only done a little bit. And I've got this brush, I've got a lot of control within the tip. And I'm just, maybe I didn't have to wipe it. Now we'll come around and, and I'm putting the halo on this cloud and scrumbling it all into the 
underneath bit. Don't go too deep down scrumbling because you want a nice bright halo. Come on, get on there, paint. When you watch a tutorial of mine, be sure to watch the whole lot because you'll learn a lot before you start painting from it, okay? Okay, scrumbling down into there. That's looking not too bad. When I zoom back, it'll probably look better at the moment. It looks crappy because you're so close. But it needs this halo because the sun is right behind it and it's going to be lighting this cloud up. I'll give you a zoom back bit so it's like squinting your eyes and you get an idea of, oh yeah, I see where he's going with that. Yeah, clouds take a bit of practice, so don't fret if you're not that great at clouds. If you want to be great at clouds, you can. It just takes a lot of time and practice and you learn a lot from your bad, snotty looking ones. Yeah. Because clouds... There's so many different ways they can be painted. There's so many different looking clouds. There's all sorts, you know. All right, we've got that done. See, it's, it's highlighted. I'm looking at it in the monitor there. Hello from Peru. Hello, Margarita. Hello, Inky's Art from California. Um, I'd like a, a pocket of depth where, where are we? Maybe about, yeah, I'm looking here. I see already a light bit there, so I'll use that. So I want to go against the dark, and if anything, wipe that brush, push it out. You'll see what I mean in a minute. It's like a light bit piercing through, because the sun's right there. Let me have a look in the monitors at doing what I'm thinking. That'll do it, don't muck with it, that'll do it. Now, we're gonna get a bit of tape. This is my low tacking tape. Didn't, didn't, that's long enough. And we want some white. So now I'm putting this paint onto this brush. I'm gas bagging away like a, like a bloody Darrow. <laughs> Now, I don't want it strong like that on the painting. You're going to ruin it, and it'll turn the beautiful sky into snot. So we're getting most of that off there now. Okay. And let's put a dot. Um, we can try and paint this out. But I want, a, I want a reference point. So I'm going to... You don't have to see it, but in your, in your real life, you'll see your dot. All right? There's my dot there. Get on over here, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. If I can see how long this has been going for. 36 minutes. All right, now we'll zoom in a bit. There it is there. Now, I don't know if you can see my dot. Now, work out, I want a ray coming there. So that dot, which is there, And this is the best way to do rays. You can have these coming in water like this as well. And what I normally do is I have them on one side of the tape on this half and on the other half, the other side of the tape, just to give it that artistic, even look. Now we're just gonna... I don't wanna hit my clouds, so I'll put my finger there. And we're just going to... This is gonna be one, so I'm just... Let it fade out on the other side. Just one side has to be against the tape. That's all that matters. This is, it's not realistic, but it's, it's an easy way to do them. Take that off. Now keep this point on the dot. Put another one about here. Oh, I'm just gonna get a little bit more paint on there. And the more you do, the better you get loading up your brush and things like that, okay? You get more better at it. It's quite easy. Don't be nervous and think you're going to ruin it. See, it doesn't look like there's much on there, but when you take the tape away, you can really see the ray. Now, you want some, be smart, think cleverly, like do some a bit close to each other. Okay, so I'm going to put another one here close. They don't have to go right to the edge of the painting. This one's going to stop about there. But see, you can see it. It's sort of like spray paint. We'll put another one about here. Now I'm going to show you something. Watch. 
I'm loading up my brush. There's not much in it, okay? So what I'm doing, that pile that I dabbed out, I just, like that, over here, wiping a bit off, and then up onto the canvas, and then coming onto the painting. Okay, now you can't even see what I'm putting on here. Where is it, Ian? Where, but it's when you take the tape away, you see it. Okay, boom, see? Okay, we'll get another one. Where's my dot? There it is. Now, when I get to the 12 o'clock position, I'm going to put the um, paint to the other side of the tape. Okay, and normally at me, 12 o'clock position, if I'm doing these, I might put a, another one close together. I'll see that big bright spot there, no good. Okay, where are we? <clears throat> now, I'll turn my tape around. I don't know why I turned my tape around. I'll put one more on that side just because I'm right-handed. It's a little bit closer. And now we'll start from here. I'll we'll get one way out there somewhere. All right. I might have to swap sides of the camera because the sunlight's coming in. You're going to fade out there. See, normally by now, if I'm doing an edited video, I'd turn the camera off and just finish these. I'll get a close one to that. Now remember, all my tutorial paintings are for sale. There's a link in the description below if you're watching the replay. It'll take you to what's available for sale. And they're all purchased through PayPal. We'll take that up. Low tack tape. So what I'd like to do, I'll get a visual. Where I want me sky about. I want the water about there, all right? So that's where I'll put my tape. Yeah, I want to paint the water and get this in here. So I'm going to use this brush here. I've got some white, I'll get some flow white just in case, and we want some darker bands in this as well. I forgot me moon, I'll get me moon up there in a minute. So I'm gonna get this color onto the canvas, and let's get that on there. Oh, it's very green, isn't it? Let's dampen that a bit, it needs to be very damp, Ian. I've just wet the brush a bit, because you'll see the difference now. Yeah, look at that. Now I'm just picking up a little bit of white in there. Look at that, oh, lovely. It's turning it turquoisey. A bit more white, and I'm pulling it down. And I'll, I'll make me bands up in this water as I go. I'll get the water all the way here to that line and then I'll show you how I bring my shoreline. Now let's get some more white, get some more bands in there. Paint that there. Now that's still wet, which is good. We're probably going to have lights and darks in here. So I want to pick up some of that. Get a dark band going there. And pull it through. That'll do. Now I want my shore colours. Now I want a sand colour, so I'm going to use, I'm just going to pick up, because I'm looking at the colour here on the tube, and I think that'll do. It can be light and darker, that colour. So that's oxide, yellow oxide. Is it yellow oxide? Yep, yellow oxide. So we've got the white paint if we need it. I'll get some and lighten it up, because we want a darker value for the shadow of it as well. So, and this you want dribbled into your 
water to give it like the water's going over the sand. So we'll get this on there like that, get it to, I better wet the damp the brush a little bit. It just helps it move across the stitched toothed canvas. Okay, I'll get that to there, just like that. See this brush is why I like using it, it's got It's got control. I've bought too much of that green in there. But I want to get that in in the green now. Like I'm thinking, oh, it's going underwater now. Underwater, underwater. This is all the underwater bit. Get a bit more on there in. There we go. I'll wipe it. Just wiping it so as I can. See, now that's the underwater bit. Now I'm going to pick up the white because I really want some of that sandy colour light. So we'll get some of that going. Here we go. I'm just hiding that green that virtually went into it, really. So we've got some here, I'll pick some up, let's just see if I can get enough where I think the darker bit will be, so it'll be about here somewhere. I'm putting it on where my water's going to be going against the sand, which is there, and I want to just pull it. There we go. It's subtle, but it's something there. It's a bit of detail that's there. And the titanium white. Now that brush I use for the sun rays, that's my scrumbling brush to get this back into the water. Anyway, I want to bring this big at this end, big, and I'm going to stamp it along. This is the water hitting the sand. I wish I can have a sound effect for that, but I don't. So I'm coming along, coming along. Boom, I'll do one at a time. Now I've cleaned this brush. I want to make sure it's not wet, otherwise it's not going to scrumble properly. And I want to scrumble this back, leaving this side, the bottom side. I'm not going to touch it. Okay, and I want to scrumble this into the water, keeping it parallel with my horizon line, okay? I'm not going to go all over the place because it makes your painting look a bit weird and bent. Okay, so we'll bring this, wipe it as you go, and this is just, and you can see that sandy colour I put within the watercolour there, that's given the illusion that there's um, water on top of the sand, so to speak. And this is just blending it, everything's still wet so it's able to scrumble and blend okay like that. And I want to put another one, but before I do, I just want something a bit bigger here because I want it to come wider to the left hand side of the, the painting. Now I want to be wider here and come closer to there to give the, um, uh, what do you call it, perspective. Now we're keeping the bottom side tight, try and go skinnier out this end here because you're standing away from there and get a bit closer to that one there like that. Grab your scrumbler. Where are we? I'm going to zoom in a bit for you. There we go. And scrumble that into the ocean there. Leaving the bottom side solid. Don't break it, otherwise you, you ruin the look. It's like the water's folding on top of the lower side there. Keep all this. It's up to you how much whitewash you put in there. Like I said, I might detail this later on off, off camera for the art for the sale sake of the painting. See how it goes. All right. 
grab your script liner and the dark color. I'm nearly finished here with the, the bottom half. I'm grabbing that darker color. Let's grab some gray. Let's see if that's gonna darken it up a bit. Got to have it really wet. Get some blue there. Yeah, that'll do. <coughs> Get it really wet. And I just want to put that shadow line under the foam on the sand side so it gives it the illusion where it's not floating, it sits it down. So I'm going to zoom in for this just so you can see. And you just want to, where's my glasses? I had some glasses, here they are. Excuse me a minute. Is this dark enough? And I just want to twist this brush, wiggle it on. I don't think it's dark enough. Where's me black? I've got to put a little bit of black in there. It's just not, oh, tell you what, I'm a bit worried about my appendix. I've got a weird, I started getting pains in the sides yesterday and my son reckons it could be appendix. So I'm gonna to go to the doctors today and get it checked up. Now we want this very skinny, yeah, that's better. Under this line of a wave here, Wiggle and jiggle your hand around like you're really nervous. I'm not thinking. I'm, I'm letting little bits break in between. Twisting your brush as you go so the, the line is really nice and fine. Try not to make this a big fat cartoon line. Okay. I just want to look in my monitor and see how that's looking. <clears throat> Fine, beautiful, that's it. Beautiful, that'll do, that's all you need. Now let's take that tape off. Um, do I need any white, hang on, before I take the tape off, I need some whites out there. Uh, where are we? Um, for here, because me moon, I'm gonna do the moon, I'm gonna do the white, I want some white in there, so that brush, I'm just thinking out loud here. I'm gonna grab some white. I don't know if, I've, I've, I've got a bit of both, a bit of the titanium and the flow white. I want something on the horizon here. Be careful, because it might not blend. I've left it, I should have done this when I was still doing the water. That's all right. Just the horizon out there. I want light. Oh, it's still wet, that's pretty good. So I'm gonna dry that, wipe it. What's that I did there, you ask? <laughs> I'm gonna have my moon there, so I've just put the appropriate uh, reflection there for it. Oh, there. Take that off. See the low tack tape? It's just floating on there. I just want to put my little crested moon in the sky. That's the titanium. Yeah, I want the thick titanium white. I don't want the other flowing white. And it's just going to be so. I've got to have it there. Just a subtle, subtle moon. Crested in the sky there. That's one of those little aspects, less is more. Try and get the, there we go. I want to scramble what paint's left into oblivion. Like that. Such a lot of detail for a little object. That's what I call a lot of sauce for little spaghetti. So green. So I'm going to use my... Where are we? In the description below will be the colours I've used in this painting, if you want to use the exact same colours that I've used. Uh, that'll be in the replay. You, the links will be there to 
click on and in the replay. Now I'm grabbing the, is that forest green? Yes, I've got forest green here. Better show you. Forest green. And I want to make a land mass to one side like I showed you before to get the illusion of some cape out there. So we'll probably go about here. I've got this on its side and I'm going to pretty much go thicker as I come along. I'll get the body of it there first. Keep the bottom straight because that's what keeps the illusion of a painting in pers perspective. All right, now we'll get all this bigger up here. Now I'm not going to have a beautiful, clear, shiny reflection in here because this is the ocean. And if you were standing on this side of the water looking over there, you're not going to see a mirror imaged reflection like you would on a lake, a sunlit lake, okay? So I'm opting not to put tree reflections in this, okay? So now I've got that where I want it. I'm given the shape that I want, bits of air in the treetops at the top. Just to create good canopies up there. Right, this is pretty dark paint. Forest green. I'm gonna dry that. All right, now I'm, gonna, I'm opting for yellow green. Yellow green is a color, it's good for landscapes. That's the color there, it's called yellow green, or this one's actually called Australian yellow green. Uh, this is good for um, highlighting your greens. So we'll get some of that down there. And I want some black as well, because we need black to bring everything forward. So what I wanna do is pretty much the bottom of this Jingle jangle me hand along there, get some darks in there. Don't kill too much of the, that dark green though. Come on, get in there, come on, and dance it up. There we go, come on, there you go. Just scrumble that up into that green a bit there. Wash that brush, and now I want to highlight that with the yellow green that I've just picked up. Let me just see how long we've been going for. 67 minutes, my goodness. That means it's an hour and seven minutes. Now I'm picking up the yellow green. How are we here? Beautiful. Okay, did I draw that other one? I did. Now if anything, I want to umbrella shapes and just come from the top where are we down with this yellow green and if you'd like to you can always brighten this yellow green up with some cad yellow this yellow green has that it's got like a brown green into it so it's adding that real look of greens because a lot of greens have dead wood stick colors in them there we go Put the odd little bit into the black. All right, look at that. I might just hover across the top of the canopy there. Because it looks quite good. Now we're going to quickly put the shore on there. So I'll use the same brush. And I'm going to use the, where is it, where is it? I'm just trying to work out. I'll just have to use the yellow oxide again, eh? And a bit of white, because I want it a bit lighter out there. Let that brush go. So down here, a little bit of white. And I'm going to mix up the paint for me bank out there. I want it very, very bright. And we'll do it. I think that's good enough here. Now I better wet it a little bit so it's going to transfer good. And see that island? It's looking a bit... Mm. That's what this is going to do. So you want to start very fine out there.
you might need a couple of coats of this. But I'm leaving the dark at the top of this colour that I'm putting on now because that's separating the trees from the ground. All right, let's get this on there. It's going to need a few coats, but anyway, you get the gist of what I'm trying to do. Get underneath here. Very thin out there, and you can come wider as you come to the right side of your painting. Okay. See, it's an interactive paint, so it's it opens up what's dry sometimes, but that's all right. I'll detail that landmass later. But now I want to put some white on there, okay? So we grab our titanium white from the tube. Just bear with me a minute, I'm trying to find it. Where is it? And I show you what I want to do. I'll zoom back out. Is grab your, I'm going to knife it on. So we'll grab some. Use your appropriate knife and spread a sheet out. Make sure you're nice clean. Spread a blanket of paint out so it's like a film like that, okay? Wipe your knife and start all over again and just get it on its edge and cut it on a diagonal. And you've got a beautiful roll on there. And then we want to sit this just against that, oh, not so thick, thin as possible if you can. And I want to, how's that looking? Well, that's all right. It can be like, um, like to get my knife I've just wiped the knife and that big thick blob I'm just gonna see if this does anything this is why I hate knives but that's fine I'll film it and what I mean by film is I'll grab a flat I dampen it and wipe it dry grab my stick put it on the angle of the water there and I want to turn that I'm picking it up with a flat Wash it, wipe it, so it's a little bit damp, the brush, and it'll turn that big heavy white line into film out there. And just looks a bit more soft and real for the painting's sake. Okay, let's autograph it. And what I'll do now is I'll put a signature on it, we'll whack a frame on it, and I'll acknowledge some of your comments there and say good day to you. So we'll put our little signature here. And make sure when you sign a painting, if you know it's going to be framed, allow your signature to be in and up from the corner enough so the frame's not going to cover your, your signature, okay? And just remember, all my paintings are for sale, like I said before. Link in the description below to see what's available. All right, I'll zoom out. All right. And we'll whack a frame on it, which is right over here. Frames usually look good on a seascape, but look at that. That's not too bad, eh, for a live show. I did all right there, I reckon. Whew, I do worry a bit. I've finished it, it's a bit of a, um, uh, what do you call it, a sunlit, sunlit, yeah, sunlit cloud. 
All right, if you like what I'm doing, you make sure you tell your friends, but if I've upset you and you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.